5.6, the quadratic formula, and the discriminant. So let's take a look here and see what we have. I come from Texas. The quadratic formula is this, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Um, what is the quadratic formula? Uh, what is it used for? Now, these are really good questions that you should be thinking about right now. Basically, we learned how to solve quadratics by factoring, and wherever they cross the x-axis, that's your answer. Um, then, in 5.2, we learned that we could solve equations with quadratics in them, with the uh, x's squared in them, uh, by factoring. And then in 5.3, we realized that we could solve by just finding the roots and uh, just square rooting items. And then in 5.4, we realized that sometimes there are some i's, some imaginary numbers in them, but we can still solve them. And then we finally realized in 5.5 that there's, you know, some that we can't uh, factor, so we switch them into forms that we can factor. Finally, we had the quadratic formula. This method works on anything. Any kind of quadratic that you have. Any kind of quadratic. So any type of quadratic that you have, this will work to solve it, and this is the formula to do so. Um, a can't be zero because you can't have uh, something in the denominator that is zero because it's undefined. And this is the form. A x squared plus b x plus c where you know a is uh, out in front of the x squared, b is out in front of the x, and c is the number all by itself. And you just plug them in accordingly to solve it. Um, this can be used any time to solve any type of quadratic. So, so doing this before you solve this, you need to get zero on one side. So that's what we need to do. So I'm going to subtract five on both sides to get two x squared plus x minus five. Now I have my a, b, and c. A is two, b is one, c is negative five. So according to my formula, I need to plug a one in here a 1 in here. I need to plug a 2 in for a, and then I need to plug a negative 5 in for c. So let's combine any, everything under the root. That's a 1 squared is 1, negative 4 times 2 times negative 5. I end up getting a 40. I have a 2 times 2, which is 4 in the bottom. 1 plus 40 is 41. And if you can simplify the root, you want to do so, but we can't. Square root of 41 is it, so there's your answer. Negative. Um, 1 plus the square root of 41 divided by 4, which is about 1.35, and negative 1 minus the square root of 41 over 4. That's what plus or minus means. If you have a plus, you take it the positive answer. If you have a minus and the minus, there's one, two answers to this, 1.35 and negative 1.85. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. So we got to combine all of our like terms now onto one side again. So I'm going to subtract a 5x to get x squared minus 6x. Then to get rid of that negative 9, I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So I end up getting x squared minus 6x plus 9. And now to factor this, we have our a, b, and c. So a is 1, so I put an a in for 1. b is negative 6, so I put a negative 6 in there. And c is 9. Now notice how I wrote this. Negative the whole b is negative 6. That's why it's negative, negative 6, and negative 6 squared. That's very important to keep in mind. People forget that when they plug it in. The whole item b there, the whole b is negative 6. So a whole negative 6 goes in there. So negative, negative 6 is positive 6. Negative 6 squared is 36. Negative 4 times 1 times 9 is negative 36. And we have a 2 on the bottom. 36 minus 36 is 0. So really all you have is 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So 3 is your answer because all that stuff cancels out. I hate, I hate, I hate Peter Pan. All right, so now we have a positive 2 here. So i got to move everything onto one side. So let's subtract a 2. It doesn't matter if I have negatives out in front. It doesn't matter if I have a 10 square, uh, x squared out in front. It doesn't matter what it is. You still use those to solve the problem. So... Um, my a is negative 1, so I put a negative 1 in there. My b is 2, so I plug a 2 in, and my c is negative 2. So put a 2 there um, because it's b. Put a 2 in there because it's b. Um, put a negative 1 in for a, both down there and there, and a negative 2 for c. That becomes a 4. Negative 2 times negative 1 times negative 2, that becomes a negative 8. I have a negative 2 in the bottom and a negative 2 outside. 
4 minus 8 is negative 4. And remember, you have a negative, so let's take that out, right, and make that an i. And the square root of 4 is 2, right? I wrote this as negative 1 and 4. Negative 1 became i. The square root of 4 is 2. Also now notice, I can divide each of these to get rid of that fraction. So let's get rid of that negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. All that really happened there was you flip-flopped it. If you kept it the same way, it really wouldn't matter. You could have 1 plus i and 1 minus i, but it really doesn't affect your answer. That's just saying minus plus, because when you divide it, it's like saying a negative. So positive times a negative is a negative. That's why the negative is on top now. Negative times a negative is a positive. That's why the positive is on the bottom now. Have you ever had to haul a can of paint to the top of a water tower All right. to defend your sister's honor? You might be a redneck. This whole thing is the quadratic equation. A discriminant is this item here, what's underneath the root sign. That is a discriminant. Okay? You can use a discriminant to find out the number of solutions. How many solutions are there in your quadratic? That's what you can find if out. If you own a home that is mobile and 14 cars that aren't, you might be a redneck. All right, so uh, when the b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, you have two real solutions. If b squared minus 4ac equals 0, then you only have one solution. And if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, you have two imaginary solutions, which means two solutions that aren't real. If your family tree does S not fork. Uh, example 4, b squared minus 4ac. So find the discriminant. So you have a, b, and c. b is negative 6. We put that in there. a is 1. c is 10. So I plug it in. Negative 6 squared is 36. Negative 4 times 1 times 10 is 40. So you end up getting a negative 4. Since it's a negative number, we have two imaginary solutions. We have two imaginary solutions because it's less than 0. It's negative. We plug this one in. Um, b squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 9. We end up with 36 minus 36, which is 0. 0 means there's only one answer to the problem, and that's a real answer. And in this problem, we have negative b plus or minus uh, uh, negative. Or sorry, b squared, which is negative six squared minus four times one times eight for a and c, and then thirty-six minus thirty-two, which is a positive four, meaning there's two real solutions. I'm sorry that people are so jealous of me. Um, I can help it that I'm popular. When I come back, I will finish up five point six on quadratic equations and discriminants.